What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Whitney Kilgore and on this channel I talk a little bit about faith, entrepreneurship, and living intentionally. If you're interested in content that is geared towards just trying to become the best version of yourself, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to the channel because that is the goal over here. In today's video, we are talking about resetting for the month of May. We're going to talk about what went good and bad in the previous months and then what we're doing differently in the month of May to make sure that we um, have a little bit more success going forward. So if you're interested in that, make sure you go ahead and keep watching and let's get into the video. All right, so let's just go ahead and do a quick recap of March. For me, March went pretty good. I did find myself working out three to five times a week like I planned. Um, I left at work most days at 7 o'clock and not the 6.50 goal that I had, so I didn't quite reach that. I recorded one out of the three videos that I planned to record, so that's what I had, sis, and that's what I gave. Um, I finished, I did not finish my 12-week yearbook, which we didn't finish it, but I did finish this book in like six days, y'all. It's called The Complete Guide to Biblical Fasting, Master the Habit that Provokes God's Favor by Ted Shuttlesworth. So I was able to finish this book and it was so good on so many levels. Opened my mind to so many things of ways that I'm self-sabotaging myself, ways that I'm, you know, lacking discipline and self-control, which I knew, but, you know, having a biblical perspective of it really just kind of opened my eyes to some things. So I've like gifted this book to like three people since reading it because it just blew my mind so much. And so if you are in a, a space where you're not feeling disciplined or like you have much self-control, I want to encourage you if you are Christian to make sure that you get this book and just read it and see how it opens your mind. My friend gifted it to me and it was so necessary. I've been out here thinking I was killing the game, you know, out here living for Jesus, but this is such an important part of our faith journey that I just kind of have been overlooking. And so now it's something that I'm doing differently and really keeping in mind as I'm trying to walk this thing out. So. I did finish this book. I did not finish the other one. So I feel like I kind of still accomplished the goal of reading one book a month. Um, I also went to my sister's baby shower. I'm gonna insert some pics here. Some pictures of her and her husband that I was able to take for them while I was there. I really like taking pictures. And so I had a really good time taking these and it just, you know, just showed me that I can literally do anything that I put my mind to. So these pictures turned out so cute. She was so happy with them and I just really enjoyed doing that. So um, we had a great time at the baby shower. I did a turn and burn, went for the baby shower and came back. And um, so March was really, really good. April started off with a bang, y'all. April 1st, I got promoted to Master Sergeant. Super excited about that, means more money, means more responsibility, more opportunities. God's just blessing me and I'm just thankful for it. So, but when it comes to my goals and stuff, I did not set any goals for the month of April. So I didn't take time to reset. As you see, I didn't have any kind of video and I was, I really felt like I was just out there flopping. If you find yourself in a space where you're not getting things done month after month, maybe you gotta see if you need to change something up. I felt all over the place with no direction because I didn't have any goals or intentions for the month that I set. So that kind of threw me off a little bit. I found myself just kind of giving myself way too much grace um, in areas that I should not have. I didn't track any of my habits. I, you know, I didn't fall off too crazy because they had, they're really becoming a part of who I am, but I didn't track any habit. I wasn't, um, you know, intentional about what I was doing each week or each day. And so I feel like that was a big um, distraction for me, not having that uh, intentionality. Uh, I did study my word daily and incorporated weekly fasting. So one day a week I'm fasting from sunup to sundown and I want to get better with that doing uh, longer fast just for spiritual reasons because I feel like God showed me so many things since I've been really opening myself up to more fasting since reading that book and I'm trying to really incorporate that into my life to be a normal part of who I am and what I'm doing. All right also this month I attended the um, Woman and Her King conference at the church that I started out, that I really started out in um, back in Texas where I really got serious about Jesus. The church I talked about in my video, you know, the people who kind of met me at the lowest point of my life. I went back there to speak at the women's conference and it was amazing. Like 
just the revelations I got out of that conference was amazing. I had a good time seeing my family. We were cooking and talking and eating and loving on each other. And it was just so refreshing to, to be back in that place. And so I'm gonna insert a little clip here, a conversation that we had. It was called a pod hash. And so it was really good. And I'm gonna insert a little clip right here. So um, I think one of the biggest challenges they face is seeing all the stuff on social media and being messed up, not necessarily being addressed in the church. It's almost like sometimes we're afraid to talk about some of the things that we're seeing on social media. We're seeing a whole bunch of, I mean, I'm just going to name names. One of the things I do is um, when I go to schools and stuff, I got to know what's going on so I can talk to these girls and meet them where they are. So I know about the Cardi B's and the Scissors and all that stuff, right? These are all artists who promote promiscuity and all these different things. So they, they see these things on social media and the devil making it seem like these people are women out here, you know, living lives that aren't pleasing to God. They see all this stuff, they see them getting the fame, getting the likes, getting the validation and all those things. They're seeing that and not necessarily knowing, man, if this ain't where it's at, how are they living so good, you know, therefore living so good? And then a lot of times they come to church and then honestly, when they leave church, they don't necessarily see the same thing, right? Um, we're not talking to them, we're not telling them how to navigate the stuff they're seeing on social media as Christians, right? We have to be able to address the witch talk. Do y'all know about witch talk? My kids, y'all know about witch talk? Witch talk, so in Virginia, for example, my son is eighth grade, he tells me about the little girls casting spells on their boyfriends, trying to get them to like them. Which talk is a part of TikTok that deals, like you got women on there cast, literally you scroll and they're casting spells. They're telling spells, teaching girls how to use crystals and how to use sage and how to do all these demonic things. And not only kids, but women. It's women learning those things too, you know? And especially like if you're a woman and you're, you're, you've been through some things and you've been asking God to, to do something for you and it seems like he ain't did it and then they tell you that you burned this sage over here or you you know, you pray on this crystal, you know, some things are gonna work out for you. You know, you wear this around your neck, it's gonna protect you. You might feel a little sense of comfort in that, and you get to, you get to stop trusting God. And it's not only affecting teens, but it's affecting women as well. Wow. Yeah. So you cannot talk to them about sex, but part B gonna talk to them about sex, but she's gonna talk to them about it in a perverted way. Right. So we have to like, like sex is good, it's sex, but the thing God created You know, why he said husband and wife, and why we do that. And we, when you're not around to keep them from doing what they want to, you know, what you want them to do, they're going to do whatever they're seeing or whatever they're being influenced by. So I think it's important that we, we, we have to talk about how to navigate life, and, and if they're doing social media, how to navigate life, seeing social media, knowing what God expects of us as Christians, and how to walk that out. That um, I started doing this month was writing a book. I'm giving myself six months for reasons that I'm gonna tell you guys about um, in the future. But when I say it's just been coming, I've always wanted to write a book, but I didn't have a sense of urgency about it. But the way things went at this conference, some things just really got solidified, um, solidified within me, and things spoken over me that really kind of just pushed me in a direction that like that I needed to go and I'm so thankful for that because I, I told you guys I've been kind of at this spot of like Lord what do you want from me and so going there and getting these revelations was just so amazing to me and I feel like it it, it literally just put me back on track so I'm super excited about that if you guys want to know the process that I'm taking writing this book you want me to share some of the things that I'm doing then make sure you guys leave it in the comments um, but it's a whole process that I'm going through and I know God is gonna bless this thing the name of the book is God, I'm Serious This Time because y'all know we didn't tell God that we serious a thousand times and then end up in the back, back in the same situation. So I want to talk about that and talk about how we can overcome that and really get serious about being serious with God. So that's the book. I'm super excited about it. I'll be telling you guys a little bit more about that as we get further along, but excited about it. Like... <laughs> Like, I really feel like I heard instructions from him this month, and that was so amazing to me. Um, you guys know that I've been taking this year to really just kind of 
block out some things and just focus on what it is that God wants me to do and not what Whitney just wants to do because I'll do a whole bunch of things, but they're not necessarily what God wants me to do. So I've been trying to narrow that down, eliminate distractions so I could really hear from God. And I really heard from God this month and it's just been amazing. So um, I'm excited about that. You guys will be seeing this video on the first, um, but this weekend, the last weekend of the month, my family came up and I'm gonna insert some clips of my sister and my mom and my brother surprising me. And they, they've been, putting together a whole promotion ce celebration for me this whole time for like a month and a half now and I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea y'all. Clay has been in on it. He's been holding out and but it was so it was just amazing. I can't even like put into words how excited I was, how excited I am and how thankful I am. They invited my friends that are here. Um, and it was just so cool. So, so March was good, April was good, but I told you I, I fell off with my goals and productivity. So in the month of May, I have to do something different. So I wanna share with you guys my goals for the month of May so that we can get right into um, one more thing that I wanna chat about. So this month, I told you guys that I have a goal to max the ACFT, which is the Army new, the Army Combat Fitness Test. Um, I have to make at least an 80 in each event and I won't have to get taped. Like they weigh me and take me and make sure that my body fat percentage is all good. So my goal is to max it, get an 80% in each event, and then I don't have to worry about that. Um, so this month, it's so important that I stick to my goals. I take the test on the 19th. I've been getting prepared for it a little bit, but I'm stepping it up this month so that I can really accomplish that goal. And I'm gonna let you guys know how I do in the next <laughs> reset video. So workout goals this month are to work out five days per week. So every um, Monday, Tuesday, rest day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday. Um, three cardio days a week is the goal. Like I have to do that because the run has your girl out there <laughs> about to die. But we can't die if we're gonna max this ACFT. So um, three days a week, I'm gonna be running. So that is one of my goals as far as working out. I'm going to meal prep. So meal prepping has been a struggle for me this year because I just have a lot going on. Even though I've let go of social media and stuff, I still have a lot going on. So the goal is to meal prep and do things that help me be successful at taking meals to work so I don't have to eat out. Um, I'm, my goal is to fast Wednesdays from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So when I get up in the morning to 6 p.m. to stick to my goal of fasting, just to take time to communicate with God, to you know, to get close to him, to just be attentive and, and, and be listening for what it is he's trying to get to me. I know y'all tired of me with this goal, but baby, this goal is coming back every time until it is accomplished, okay? It's to finish the 12 week year. <laughs> it's gonna take me a year to finish the 12 week year is what it's looking like, but I'm not gonna let that be the case because I'm gonna prove y'all wrong, okay? I'm going to finish the 12 week year this month. I'm not gonna get distracted because I got distracted with this book, girl, and another book. I didn't start to read other books, but this month, I'm going to finish this. So I did read a good little amount of it, um, but I need to get back on it because I want to complete this book. So that's my goal, uh, to complete the book. And I want to write 45 minutes every weekday morning. I've been doing that since I came back from the event. I write, I wake up in the morning, I write for 45 minutes, um, and then I get up and I start my morning routine. So I want to keep that up because the goal is to write 5,000 words a week so that I can have what I need in order to get the book published and stuff when I get to six months. So I'm um, going to do that. And then um, I want to bring back my podcast. I want to bring back season four of the podcast. So this month, the only thing I want to do is get the outline for season four. What episodes am I doing? What are the guest speakers I'm going to have? I want to get the outline completed so that I can start planning to relaunch that in the third quarter of the year. You know, I had a podcast. Make sure you look in the description box below. You can find the link there and you can check it out. Also on www.womanintentionally.com. There's all kind of information about the podcast there. If you want to be a guest, you can go and let me know and we might have you on the podcast, girl. So make sure that you go there and check that out as well. 
YouTube, I want to do two additional videos. So I'm doing this one and I want to get two additional videos up this month because I have the content. I just need to create it, okay? Um, I hit 16 years in the Army this year, so I want to do a four-year retirement plan. I want to show you guys how I'm planning for retirement in the next four years so that if any of you are military, um, you can kind of come along with me for that journey. So if you are military, make sure that you are subscribed and make sure you let me know down below how many years you have left in the Army or how many years you have served so we can connect, okay? That's good. Lastly, I want to do a faith-based video. So we have the Army video and then one faith-based video faith-based video not sure what that's going to be about just yet but that's the goal um that i want to do um one good thing that happened at work this this month oh in march was that i had to do an interview to become the brigade equal opportunity advisor for my unit and i did get the job <laughs> and so i'm excited about that because you guys know i love just listening to people, understanding people, and talking with people. So now I'm literally going to get to pay, get paid to do it, okay? And that's the kind of thing that I want to do when I get out of the military. I want to have a coaching and consulting firm that can do those things for organizations, teach diversity, teach communication skills, and interpersonal communication skills, and all of those things to organizations. So this is really, really good. The last thing that's going on in May, which is a lot, I know, me starting school, y'all. Please keep your girl lifted, okay? Because I start school May 27th, and you know, it's been a minute, but we're going back for our master's in organizational psychology. So it's about to get real, okay? So make sure you guys keep me lifted in prayer that I can transition into that in a way that uh, works for me in my life and the things that God wants me to do. That's all I got, okay? So those are my goals for the month of May. So March, I did okay. And then in April, I just fell off, right? My habits, I weren't tracking them. So these are the things that I'm doing to get back on track in the month of May. Um, I'm hiring meal prep services. Y'all know I said I want a meal prep, so I have decided to order Factor. Um, when that comes in, if you guys want, I can tell you guys a little bit more about it, how it tastes and how it's working out for us. But I ordered me and Clay's lunch for the week. Every week we'll get 10 meals delivered and that will be our lunch that we'll have every day. So I do not have to meal prep anymore. And like I, when I say a, a weight has been lifted off my shoulders, girl, I feel good, okay? Next is getting back to my nighttime and morning routines. Like solidifying those, not slacking on those, but really getting back to my night and morning time routines because they just kept me so, they just really kept me in the groove and on track. So getting back to those and then using my tracker. When I didn't use my tracker, I just, oh yeah, I did pretty good, but in reality, I hadn't done good, right? So because I wasn't using my tracker and I had no proof. So seeing that hard proof is a hard truth that, you know, that hits. And they talk about that in the 12 week year, like making sure that you have some kind of way to look back and track your success and you're not over or underestimating what it is that you're doing when you can't figure out why you're not reaching your goal. The other thing they talked about in the 12 week year was owning the day, right? So a lot of times we we go at our goals saying, I want to accomplish this in 2023, but then we don't break it down to like what needs to happen each month, what needs to happen each week, and then what needs to happen each day. So their advice is to win the day. Own the day, every day that you get up, do what you need to do because those things are gonna add up. So if I do what I need to do, those goals I should set for myself, if I can do those things every day, then that's gonna get me some results when I go to look back over my week. So that's my goal and that's how I'm really planning to get back on track. Be super intentional about owning the day and putting those things in place to really help me out. Now, I don't know if this is you, but I wanted to share with you what I like I'm understanding more about myself. A lot of the success that I'm not seeing when it comes to my habits and my fitness and things like that is self-sabotage, okay? Self-sabotage, I'm gonna give you the definition. It says self-sabotage creates problems in daily life and interferes with long-standing goals. Mm. Okay, winning the day, I'm not winning the day, so my long-term goals end up just kind of going by the wayside. Some forms of self-sabotage are procrastination, self-medicating with drugs and alcohol. You get drunk or you get high so that you don't have to realize that you're not doing what you need to do and it just kind of numbs you and you go on about your life. Comfort eating, okay? It says, so when I saw comfort eating, I said, okay, that sounds like your girl, okay? 
and I looked up the definition to comfort eat. And this is how I study the Bible too, right? I read something and then I'll see a word and I'll define that word and just keep going down this rabbit hole until it all makes sense to me. So when I saw comfort eating, I, I looked it up and it says, turn to food when faced with a difficult problem, stressed, or even when you're bored. Y'all know I drive an hour and a half to work every day. So some of my eating, the bad eating that I do is when I'm driving and when I'm bored. So it just made me start asking these questions. How can I occupy my mind or, you know, put something in place so I don't have to stop and get a kid's meal. I'll, I'll stop and get a kid's meal on my way home. Then I'm gonna cook dinner, eat again. Oh, it's not that bad, it's just a kid's meal, but in reality, it's not helping with my goals, right? So, um, you know, what can I do to occupy my time or to help me, you know, stop self-sabotaging? I do have a plan. I, oh, I bought grapes and some fruit, some stuff that I can have in the car with me when I'm driving so that I don't stop and get something that's not healthy um, and things like that. And then making sure that I'm listening to something that's going to keep my attention so that I'm not bored and eating out of boredom. Some signs of comfort eating, right? You have sudden urges or cravings, like all of a sudden you just want some food or you just want something. That's me, I, that happens to me. Craving only certain foods. I don't just want food because I'm hungry, I want chocolate. I told y'all about that crumble cookie. It'd be having me in a chokehold. It did used to have me in a chokehold, but now I do it on weekends only. I'll get one on the weekend and that's it. So I've kind of overcome that, but definitely craving certain foods was um, something I was dealing with. Overeating, I won't say that I overeat a lot, but the tendency is always there. I try to be very mindful of that now, but overeating is a side of comfort eating. And then the thing that got me, shame or guilt. Feeling shame or guilt over your eating habits. That's me. I be feeling shame and guilt when I don't do what I know I'm supposed to do. And so that's how I know I'm out here doing some comfort eating. So my question then was like, am I using food in areas that I should be um, using the Holy Spirit? Am I using food to comfort me when I should be using the Holy Spirit or seeking God or trying to figure out what's going on? So, whoo! Hopefully that was insightful to you. And if that is you, let me know down below where you fall into that at so we can kind of, you know, just share and maybe understand each other a little bit better. But my discipline has to improve. My mindset has to improve. Um, one thing that really helps me is just talking to myself. And I've been learning to do better with this. I am a healthy person. I do care about my fitness. I care about my body. I am physically fit. Like saying these things to me, becoming this person and identifying with this person so that I do think that get me to that place of who I want to be. So that's the goal. I gotta keep those kind of things and improve my discipline and my mindset. And so um, those are the things I'm trying to work on this month. I'll, I'll let you guys know how that goes and, and where I am, you know, throughout the month. But that's where I am right now. And I'm just trying to take this thing to a new level. Um, if you don't sit down and take time to like assess where you are and what's going on with you, you will continue to do the same thing and not get any results. And that's where I have been. And that's when it comes to this um, self-sabotage things, when it comes to like eating these days. And I've never really had that problem before in the past. Like, but I'm just like trying to figure it out and the Lord's been just showing me different things. And so that's where I am. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Um, and that's what I'm trying to work on and grow in when it comes to those kind of things, because my fitness and my health is very important to me. And so I gotta make some changes and continue to try to make changes until it sticks. So. That's where I am, you guys. I hope that this video was somewhat encouraging or insightful and that you guys are gonna try to be super intentional in the month of May. If you have not set your intentions for the month, I just wanna encourage you to go ahead and write them out, figure out what you wanna do, what is that you wanna accomplish on a daily basis, what it is that you wanna accomplish on a weekly basis so that that stuff can start to add up because we want to see some progress. I have made progress up to this point, and so I see that it works and now I just need to keep up at it so that it really becomes a part of who I am. For watching again, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. All of my jewelry is from Solid Jewels Companies. If you are interested in any kind of gold jewelry, make sure that you head over to the website, solidjewelsco.com and shop for high quality stainless steel, water resistant and tarnish free jewelry. That's gonna keep up with your lifestyle. Enjoy your week, enjoy your Monday, and I will see you guys in the next video.